Round four of the 2023 season sees us come to the jewel in the Formula One calendar, the Monaco Grand Prix. And like previous years, that jewel will be shimmering a little brighter as we're once again set to race under the floodlights for a night race in the Principality. And coming into Wednesday, Mercedes shocked the entire world of Formula One by officially announcing that they and Max Verstappen had come to a mutual decision to part ways following the German Grand Prix. In his place, Toto Wolff gleefully announced in the same press conference that they had signed the home favorite for this weekend, Charles Leclerc, to replace the Dutchman. Wolf, when questioned about the entire deal, said, quote, We cherish the 2019 championship we won with Max, but it was clear following Hockenheim that he had lost faith with us, and vice versa, we believed he was not performing at the high level we expect. Charles won that same race in an unbelievable manner, and we knew he was potentially open to moving elsewhere. So, we had a private chat on Sunday evening, and by Monday, the paperwork was sorted. We can't wait to see what he can do in our car. And with that, the wheels were put into motion for Ferrari, who had been left high and dry on Monday to sign Verstappen ahead of this weekend's race. Max is understood to be very happy with the move, stating that, quote, Ferrari proved the last race they can win, and that's where I want to be, ultimately. In contrast, Ferrari had to admit they were left upset that even after winning a race in their car, that the damage beforehand was too much to keep Leclerc in red. But with Verstappen, they have a world champion driver, something they cannot deny is their style when it comes to signing talent. Now, speaking about the cars following Thursday practice, it's seeming like a stroke of genius by Leclerc to sign for the German outfit as their cars shared the top of the timesheets with Red Bull and Jaguar. With the most outright downforce of any car, this might be Mercedes' one shot to go for a win without further upgrades. Audi, unsurprisingly, were struggling, but not as much as the paddock expected with more aero upgrades on the car, and so they hope they can still be in a battle with McLaren. BMW, Renault, and Aston Martin appeared to all be struggling for outright pace around the streets of Monaco, and so for the first time this season, there were signs that there might be two distinct packs of cars come Sunday. Following last race, however, nothing can be certain, it seems, in this season of F1 My Driver. Now it's time to head on and see how everyone did on the most crucial Saturday of the year. Down the streets, through the tunnel, and by the harbor of Monte Carlo, it was the hometown hero, Charles Leclerc, and his new Silver Arrow that was quickest, and by nearly a tenth and a half, the most dominant pole we've seen in 2023 so far, and at the shortest circuit, no less, he's joined by Stoffel Van Dorn in the jack. Unsurprisingly, the Red Bull cars did well in qualifying, as they have done all season, but this time they'll be looking to hold on to those positions and elevate themselves from the bottom half of the team standings, Giovinazzi leading Gasly. George Russell proves the pace of the Mercs with both cars in the top five, while Alexander Albon made his first Q3 appearance of the season, elevating his Jag all the way to the third row of the grid. Leading McLaren Erevo was nearly six tenths off the pole time, but did manage to go 21 thousandths quicker than Max Verstappen in his first race for Scuderia Ferrari. Against everyone's expectations, an Audi was seen in Q3 with Carlos Sainz behind the wheel. He's joined on row five by current championship leader Daniel Ricciardo. Leading Porsche Works driver Pascal Wehrlein just missed out on Q3 by 12 thousandths of a second, with the second Ferrari of Mick Schumacher only a further 14 thousandths behind his compatriot on an all-German row 6. Lando Norris will have a great view of his teammate's rear ring while sat on the grid in 13th position. He seemed far less frustrated, though, with his starting position than five-time world champion Sebastian Vettel. Hot off the heels of a podium at their home race, BMW find themselves locking out the eighth row of the grid with Perez ahead of Aiken, although both drivers were more than 1.3 seconds off the pole time, and Monaco continued to shine a light on the aerodynamic pecking order, with Renault only managing to get on the ninth row of the grid, while the Astons struggled worst of all, Eilat 1.9 off the pace and Chadwick 2.3 seconds slower than the time set by Charles Leclerc. Hey, what's up, guys? Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 My Driver Career Mode, episode number four today for season nine at the Monaco Grand Prix, the jewel in the Formula One calendar, and we have a Monaco night race on our hands, so it's going to look even better than usual. And of course, we have some rather interesting news going into this one. Of course, you would have seen, hopefully, at the beginning of this video, the breaking news that Charles Leclerc has gone to Monster Mercedes GP and Max Verstappen, the other 
the way to Scuderia Ferrari. Quite a change in the mid-season driver transfer market and what that means for the race. Well, very interesting because Leclerc put it on pole at his home GP ahead of the Jaguar and the two Red Bulls. It's going to be a very tough Grand Prix. Even Monaco can't really be saved too much with the My Driver universe. Monaco is still going to be Monaco. It's going to be tough to overtake. It's going to be a race of attrition, really, to try and get around this circuit. It'll be interesting to see, though, if the teams like Red Bull still find bad luck here around the Principality, despite it being so difficult to overtake. And obviously, you've got the teams like Audi going backwards a little bit. Even us and McLaren, we're a little bit out of pace compared to Red Bull and Mercedes and even Jaguar here. So it's a case of trying to defend our positions and trying to get as many points as we can, as we might not be fighting for the top positions. But it is always about consistency, especially when it comes to F1 My Driver career, and especially so this season more than ever, with only 11 rounds, you know, every round counts. So we have to try and maximize our position. So if we can't overtake, then we have to try and defend and just maintain the P7 we've got. But hopefully we can have a little look at some cars up here. The tire wear will also be an interesting thing. That will definitely come into play perhaps later on at the end of the stint during this Grand Prix. But here we go then. Exciting times in F1 My Driver. Two major players have swapped seats and we come here now to the duel in the calendar. The Monaco Grand Prix. We go to five red lights and we are out and underway racing under the front lights here at night for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's a good start for us. Down the inside we go of Alexander Albert. It's side by side as Van Dorn tries to take the lead from Leclerc up ahead but I think Leclerc maintains the lead just as Albon gets back up into P6 there so we try to have a look down the inside. Behind us Verstappen goes wheel to wheel with Carlos Sainz, the two former Toro Rosso teammates there doing battle in their Ferrari and Audis respectively. We have a little look again down the inside of Albon but fortunately to no end as Verstappen and Sainz are still side by side and Sainz will just about nick that and get up into P8 position uh, into the hairpin. Leading the way though you can see was Charles Leclerc in his Mercedes ahead of Van Dorn. Then the two Red Bulls of Antonio Giovinazzi, Pierre Gasly. Then you've got George Russell, Albon right ahead of us. And then behind, you can see lagging behind is Sainz after making that position. But uh, very awkward stuff in the hairpin, slowing everyone down behind him as he did it. As we now move back to our POV at the end of lap number one, on to two. And already having a bit of an annoying sight of that green Jaguar ahead of us, looking to overtake Albon. It appears he's a bit slower than his teammate Van Dorn, so I think we could possibly get him. But it's going to be tough, of course. And already, though, look at that. The man who got pole by over a tenth, which is one of the biggest gaps so far in qualifying. He's already streaked ahead of uh, uh, Van Dorn building that gap in P1. So at this early stage of the Grand Prix, not sure what Van Dorn and the two Red Bulls could do, but once the tire wear starts creeping in, maybe that will change things, especially traffic is going to be a major factor in this Grand Prix with the top cars wanting to try and get past the slow ones who have started the mediums, uh, you know, more so than any circuit. That is the more annoying traitor at Monaco's when you make that pit stop and come out behind those cars that are yet to pit in the Grand Prix. You know, you, there's basically either you go through them or you get stuck behind them. Like I'm getting stopped behind Alex Albin we're literally going left and right and just uh, kind of all over the back of the young Thai Brit in the Jaguars. Debut season's done quite well as of late, obviously, in the last few races uh, to get some good results. And I think he's his best qualifying to date uh, at the Monaco GP. So he's done well, but I'm hoping to try and undo him. And meanwhile, we've got Verstappen still behind Sainz there and just hanging on the back. And being honest, then behind you've got Verline, Ricardo, Mick Schumacher, then Lando Norris ahead of the BMW of Sergio Perez, who for now keeps Sebastian Vettel at bay who is struggling in qualifying to navigate his Audi compared to his more experienced, I guess, teammate with the Audi car of Carlos Sainz. But now we move back to our POV, lap number three. This is still P7, but you can see we're practically pushing Albon through some of these corners because he's going so slow, maybe already feeling the tire wear, maybe just not too confident around this circuit on heavy fuel. So we go left to right, try and cut that through, get the power down, going to squirt the throttle. We're now side by side to the last corner, and we've made a fantastic move on Albon through the last corner. No contact made really with the wall. Just a lovely overtake. Great amount of respect between us two. But now Albon's getting all flustered. And now Sainz goes the long way around. It's a fantastic move there for the Spaniard. He's got to finish the move off though in a straight line on the left hand side. Swinging through. Lovely camera angle. And Sainz has got that. So Albon loses two positions in about half a lap there. So showing that he is a rookie in this season I guess. And the lack of experience of defending positions. And so it's myself from Sainz Albon and now Verstappen coming up there but uh, at the moment the Ferrari 
Ferraris don't appear to have an amazing amount of pace there, whereas Sainz, actually surprising, looking pretty good, of course. We saw Audi bringing up grades to make sure they're okay in the corners compared to how they used to be. And now, with the engine power, he's got the move on the outside, out the tunnel. It's a massive dive there for Carlos Sainz. We're defending the best we can, but look at the power of the Audi coming through on the acceleration zone, and he gets ahead of us. We have to lift off and give him the position, otherwise there would have been a monumental crash there. So, coupled with the improved aero and obviously the ever-present great engine performance of that Audi, Sainz actually looking not too bad. I thought Audi would have been struggling so much here, but their upgrades this weekend have sure helped them just about close up the gap in the corners enough where they can still capitalise then in a straight line, whereas before, I feel like they would have been so poor in the corners that it didn't matter how quick they were in a straight line. But now we have some work to do to try and re overtake Sainz if we can, but it's be easier said than done because every single straight, no matter how great of an exit I get, he's got the brute engine power on the back straight to just keep it ahead basically. And you can see that on demonstration right here, we've been uh, really on the back of him the entire that last sector, but then onto the main straight, we're gaining a little bit with DRS, but just not enough because, you know, the, the power he's got is just too good. So on lap number nine, we're going to actually come in for an early pit stop here and try and undercut him. So I feel like a lot of people will be going a bit longer on this stint to try and stretch them out, but I feel like we have... The, I think we have the pace to be faster than Sainz. We just need that clean air and not to be stuck behind him. You know, if we're just racing him on lap time, I think we can beat him. So making this early pit stop, I think we can try and jump him and also try and close up a little bit to the top guys who we've lost already touch with, having been stuck in a battle with Albin and Sainz early on. So we're out now in last place of this GP, but plenty of clean track. And we go and uh, chase after the pack who are going a little bit longer. So I think we will have to do some overtaking. But of course, you guys know me around Monaco not afraid to make the dives, not afraid to get the elbows out, and so I think we should be able to still have enough pace to make the undercut work, even with traffic, and so here we go, the first person we're going to overtake is Jamie Chadwick as she gets done on the inside there in the Aston Martin, we're up into P19 then, into the hairpin behind Christian Lungard, and then her teammate that was of uh, Callum Eilot up ahead in the other Aston Martin, then ahead of her, uh, him is uh, Esman Ocon I believe, in the second Renault, but can we try and get on the back of Lungard, he's done so well so far this season, but both Renault struggling. Can we might try and make a very, very cheeky dive down the inside? Yes, we can. And fair play to Lungar for giving him the space there. And we've made it work. So that's what I'm saying. We're not afraid to make the dives where they need to be done and finishing off the move in some style and uh, doing it whilst not even hitting any walls or anything like that. Doing a pretty clean overtake there. And the same can be said down the inside now of Ilot having to take a lot of curb though that time to make it work. We're up into P15, but you can see the pace difference is astronomical there in terms of the sectors I'm setting are perfect up until I catch this traffic so uh, we are going quick we are one of the quick, quickest cars on track at this stage and you can just clearly see how uh, these are on show there because the grip levels are just non-existent now for these cars or even on the medium tires who are struggling and so as you come through this Grand Prix then eventually the top guys will make their pit stops Leclerc still leads the way ahead of Van Dorn then Giovinazzi in third then in P4 theoretically on the road will be Gasly but right now he's stuck behind Mick Schumacher and one of the Porsche cars of Pasco Verlain I feel, who are yet to make their pit stop in this Grand Prix. So Gasly is, I think, in uh, P6 on the road, as it stands, but of course he would be in a net P4 once Schumacher and Verlein make their pit stop, and we're up into P10 now on the road, but it might be P9 very shortly as we go the long way around, and Mirabeau on the outside of Sergio Perez, big lock up for us on the front right bit, we pull it through and we're up into P9 with a fantastic overtake there on the Mexican in the BMW Williams car, and so we can get a move on, and meanwhile behind, there is Carlos signs there so we have jumped the Spaniard and we have truly gained a lot of time in that undercut then comes uh, Max Verstappen stuck behind the Aston Martin car so everyone you can see uh, is stuck in traffic here but you know Sainz and Verstappen have really come out the worst as they're now in this massive gaggle of Aston Martin cars and Renaults as Sainz and Verstappen make a pass at the chicane there you can see behind in the distance Verstappen gets the move done on the Aston and Sainz got the move done on the Renault but these uh, these slower cars are even slower now since I overtook them because the tyre wear is really coming into their own so they're losing even more time than I did and you can see I'm losing some time so further time to Lando Norris who I'm pretty, pretty much pushing through the last corner that was and we go on the outside again on the first turn there we're making all the moves on the outside such an unorthodox uh, kind of a uh, way to make passes on a street circuit I feel but we're making it just because the pace difference is so crazy and you can see the others are also seeing that as Russell is stuck behind Verline now looks like Gassi's uh, cleared uh, at least that 
Porsche car. He's still yet to clear Schumacher, who's in uh, P4 on the road as it stands. And to be fair, for Schumacher and Berline, the best job they can do is trying to hold up these cars, because the, the more they hold them up, the better they'll do later on in the Grand Prix. But I feel like Russell may have different ideas now as we come back to his POV out the tunnel. Move on the outside there, and it's going to be Sabah. So through that corner, Berline gives a very good fight on the exit, to be fair to him. The German versus the Brit, but the Brit will get it there. Russell swings through up into what is now P6 on the road. He's got Gasly up next, who's still stuck behind the German of Mick Schumacher there. Can the Frenchman do this? He kind of needs this race to kickstart his season. Gasly, I feel like he's only got, I think, four points so far. This season got massively unlucky in a lot of these opening races here. And Red Bull as a whole will be hoping they can just carry forward some decent points. I don't know if they'll get the win or the second place necessarily, because it looks like Leclerc and Van Dorn have those booked in. But you just never know around Monaco. Speaking of which, uh, here they are in P3 and P2. But yeah, you never know around Monaco. And you also just never know an F1 my driver. We saw last race, anything could happen. The safety guard could change something in this Grand Prix. A crash could happen and change things. But for now, Leclerc is dominating his home race and looking very comfy in his new surroundings of that monster Mercedes car. But now back to our POV, P8, then having overtaken Norris. And we could try and get the other Porsche Formula 1 car now. And lap number 17, just about nearly halfway through, gone of this Grand Prix. We're going to try and make the move very late on the inside. It's so close to the wall, so close to Verline's tyres, but we make it through. It's another clean overtake. These passes have been really awesome to see. Not just me as well. Also, the AI is here. You can see Gassi on the left-hand side making the lunge. Finally, on Mick Schumacher. They're side by side. Oh, a bit of a tank slapper there for Gassi as he goes through that corner, but the Frenchman's done it, and he's up into P4 finally. Now, he's got the clean air to chase after his teammate, and Schumacher will fall away with that tyre wear, and eventually George Russell will catch up, and so the Mercedes on the left-hand side going the long way around. Schumacher tries to defend, but you can see mid-corner, he's not even able to get the nose turned in because the tyre's going off so much, and so Russell is up the order, and order is somewhat resumed then for the top guys with Leclerc, Van Dorn, Giovinazzi, Gassi, and Russell lining up like that on the road now with no traffic in between. Then you've got myself chasing after then uh, Schumacher and trying to, you know, close up to the top guys as much as we can. Behind, you've got Verline leading Norris, leading Sergio Perez. These three can't get enough of each other. These three have been literally joined to the hip, it would seem, in so many of these F1 My Driver races. And you've got Jack Aiken in the other BMW Williams ahead of Carlos Sainz in the first of the Audis here. And I think, I reckon, the Spaniard might make a move out of the tunnel. The Audi's been so good at this section with the power it's got. And so out the tunnel, where we go to the inside. Yep, Jack doesn't go too defensive there. And so Carlos Sainz has another move in the books on that part of the circuit. And now he can go chasing after those uh, other three slower cars. But behind Aiken is then Albon then in the other Jaguar. Struggling a little bit now in this uh, second phase of the Grand Prix. Then you've got the Renaults of Ocon. Then Eilat. Then you've got uh, Lungard ahead of Ricardo, who's really struggling for pace. But even more so struggling is Sebastian Vettel. And then this. Oh my word. This is a very, very sorry sight. What on earth is going on here? This is Max Verstappen in his new Ferrari in last place in this Grand Prix. And yes, you're seeing things correctly. That is Charles Leclerc in his brand new Mercedes. The two that swap positions and swap cockpits going into this race. Leclerc is there looking to lap. Max Verstappen. This is quite astonishing as we ride on board now with Leclerc in his new surroundings there. He's been a man on a mission it would seem in qualifying in the entirety of this race so far. And what on earth has gone on for Max Verstappen? Not only in this race but this entire season he has scored zero points. The 2019 Season 5 World Champion of F1 My Driver has scored zero points so far and that is a very sorry sight. Leclerc goes to overtake him. Blue flags and Verstappen has to yield. What on earth has gone on there? How the mighty have fallen. I suspect in this Grand Prix at least there's more to the story than just poor driving so let's have a look at some replays here. We'll actually look through Verstappen's race as a whole so far and some actually highlights for him of going down the inside. There was that move he made uh, on the Aston Martin earlier on while Sainz made the move on the Renault so Verstappen has had some decent pace and you would see he was actually quite close to Sainz on the track so something must have occurred for him to be down in last place. He now goes and makes a move on the next lap I think that is on Christian Lungard then, round the outside this time, the chicane.
Kane. It's a fantastic move there. Look at another double pass as Albin tries to also make a move on the Aston Martin there. So looks like uh, this season, especially the moves, uh, the, the most favourable move is the one out the tunnel into the chicane. And so Verstappen goes the long way round then through that left hand into the swing pool and finishes that move off for Lungard and then makes a subsequent next move again as Sainz makes a move on the Renault ahead. Verstappen makes the move on the other Aston Martin, Callum Eilat, and makes another pass. So he's actually done pretty damn decent. He's keeping up with Sainz and all these replays here. So, you know, if it wasn't for whatever incident's about to, uh, to show, I'm sure, then he would have been right up there with the Spaniard. But instead, something's uh, gone on and he's just not there anymore. He's in now in last place. So I think finally this will be the final clip. And this is, uh, oh no, this is actually quite ironic. This is, do you know who this is in the blue Renault? This is Espan Ocon. Verstappen making a move on Ocon down the inside. And oh, he clubs the barrier. No. Oh, dearie me. This this is sensational. It had to be Espan Ocon. It just had to be. It had to be. It was written in the stars that this was when Verstappen was going to make a mistake on the wall whilst overtaking Espan Ocon, one of his, uh, let's say, not friends in real life. Uh, and he uh, faces the wall then after hitting his rear left on the wall. He then actually has to park it up a little bit as he sees some cars coming through. A vet also. Fair play to Verstappen for not making a, a fuss and making a, a bigger crash than it could have been in that section of the track but uh, that is why then the Dutchman's down in last place so I can't speak for why he's been so slow so far this season that's why he was in last place being lapped by Leclerc earlier on in this race and on lap 20 you can see we get past his teammate Mick Schumacher who finally comes in then after 20 long laps on, uh, from that set of medium tyres and we go on now up into P6 on the road with plenty of clean air ahead of us but feeling some understeer in the car and I was wondering why and we look finally at the heads up display and this is the first time I've realised this now on lap 21 that we've got some damage some slight damage to the front left uh, hand side of our front wing so I don't know how long that's gone on for and how long that's been affecting us but that may play into now the strategy of this Grand Prix because I'm now losing time to Russell up ahead of us and losing time crucially to the car behind me which is Carlos Sainz and with this wing damage we definitely can't be making a move like Ricardo's just done there on the outside of a car at turn one so we need to kind of think about the kind of you know uh, calculate the risk of maybe making a potential second pit stop we know the tire wears high we saw that clearly in the first in transition and so it's a case of maybe if I strap on a set of soft tires on the kind of right lap where I have enough laps where the soft tires don't go off maybe I could catch back up and re-overtake all the cars I potentially lose positions to but as it stands then Leclerc still leads the way from Van Dawn, Giovinazzi, Gasly in P4, then you've got Russell and I'm chasing after as best I can but like I said that damage is not helping us and meanwhile further down the road Callum Eilat's had a horrendous evening and it's going to get worse here for him and the Aston Martin team is in uh, engine goes up in smokes and he's going to be out of the Monaco GP. Surprise though looks like no safety car there the FI being very lenient indeed so no safety car like was the case last race to entirely change this race and flip it on, on its head. I was praying at this point, when I saw the yellow flags on track, I was praying for a safety car because that could have definitely helped us get a free pit stop, change the wing, and then would have really changed this race for us. But unfortunately not, just yellow flags, and so the race can continue on there. So we're still quite some way behind George Russell, and as we go through every lap, we're losing time, and that man, Science, is catching up to us, as well as all these cars. And so it's a case of, if I keep going too long, then it's going to be too little, too late to make the second pit stop. So we're going to go for it on lap 27. We're going to come in now for a set of soft tyres, change the front wing. We're going to lose probably four positions here. We're going to have to try and repass and overtake Ricardo, I believe Lando Norris, uh, Albin, and then Carlos Sainz. So four positions lost there. But like I said, with the front wing damage, I was losing near enough, at least minimum half a second every single lap, probably more as the tyres start to go off, remember. So towards the end of the Grand Prix, I probably would have been absolute chips for, for Sainz to get at the end of this race. So this way, at least I have a, start, a fighting chance of maybe getting back up into P6, but I think without the front wing change, I wouldn't have had any chance of maintaining the P6. So we're in P10 right now with 11 laps to go, and worst case scenario, we come in P7, which is where I probably would have ended up with uh, by the time Science caught me with that front wing damage. So here we go then, sending two purple first and second sectors, and making a move on Ricardo on the left-hand side there as he clouts the barrier even. We go around the outside, we gave him the room on the inside there. That was Ricardo's own accord hitting the barrier there. I think he's got some damage of his own now, ironically, and we're up 
up into P9 then of this Monaco GP. We probably would have set the fast lap of the Grand Prix that lap, was it, uh, ha having not been for having to overtake Ricardo. But here we go on lap 30 then. We're absolutely flying now in this race. Two green sectors, but the last one will be purple, I'm sure. And there we go, fast up the Grand Prix. And we're catching up to Mick Schumacher then. So we are the fastest man around Monaco now, which has uh, been a rarity, really, because Leclerc has been an absolute man on a mission this uh, th tonight. I was about to say this afternoon, but tonight, of course. But here we go now, the move on Schumacher. It's another move in the last corner, just like we did to Alden there. And another close shave with the wall and the car on the left-hand side. But again, all-round respect given between both of us there to make the move work. So we may not be fighting for the top, top positions today, but definitely having a lot of fun as we do it, trying to get back into this race here with only a fun amount of laps to go. Lap 33 then of 39. Can we sail around the outside of Albin like we did on Sergio Perez early? We try our best, but Albin, uh, like was the case earlier on this Grand Prix, so good at defending actually in that Jaguar, making it very wide indeed. So we have to wait patiently then. Maybe a move out the tunnel is going to be uh, the one for us and trying to take a leaf out of Carlo Sainz's book as we're right behind the tie brick, pretty much pushing him through those two right-handers. And so here we go, lining up the pass. We're quite some way back here, but we're going to go for a disgusting dive bomb. But look at that. We've kept the car within the confines of the track and the curb, and we've made a sensational pass up into P7 of this Monaco Grand Prix. And now we've got six laps to go. We're quite some way behind Sainz but we're just going to have to try and give it our all and push as hard as we can to catch him. As you can see, here he is uh, starting a brand new lap ahead of him uh, as an update. As still George Russell then, and you've got Gasly, Giovinazzi in P3, still keeping Van Dorn very honest. So the Jaguar car is only just about uh, kept ahead of the Red Bull, so they'll be frustrated for sure. And then Christian Horner will be frustrated that they haven't got at least a 2-3 and a double podium here with Van Dorn being the kind of odd one out, being a thorn in their plans there. And meanwhile, cutting through the traffic like a hot knife through butter is Charles Leclerc in his new Mercedes car and here we go as we move on to his POV onto the last lap of the Monaco Grand Prix he won last time out in a spectacular way for Ferrari and now he comes through to the swing pool section on the last lap of this Monaco Grand Prix his home race in a brand new car and it's going to be a second win in a row the first repeat winner since last season when Sebastian Vettel did it Charles Leclerc is going to be the king of Monaco pole and the win there ahead of Stoffel van Dorn in second place. Antonio Giovinazzi in third in the Red Bull makes up the podium. Then it's going to be Gasly, Russell, like I mentioned, and then Carlos Sainz, P6, as unfortunately we just couldn't do it. But like I said for us, I'm not disappointed because I feel like we would have been overtaken by Sainz anyway with that front wing damage. So at least I had some fun getting back up into P7 rather than just annoyingly having to give up the position to Sainz with that front wing damage. So here we are then on board with us, P7. We're actually running out of fuel just the end here so we had to lift and coast on the last lap so that's why Albon has closed up also look at that the soft tires have completely gone off here on lap 39 so we just about skate through these last corners to survive the end and get the P7 so we finish where we started in P7 ahead of Albon and Mick Schumacher but the man of the hour is my former teammate from last season Charles Leclerc two wins in a row in F1 my driver career in 2023 he wins Monaco his sixth win of his career. And like I mentioned before, the first repeat winner since Vettel last season in Season 8. And that's going to rocket him right up into the championship fight, I'm sure. But here are the full race results then. Like I went through at the end of the race, we saw the top 9. P10 was Dan Ricciardo. And then P11 will be Sebastian Vettel. And to round out the points, Lando Norris in P12 with one point for Porsche Formula 1. And then you've got Verline, Perez, Aiken, Verstappen, P16. So in the end, he did have the pace to close back up. So even after a spin and an extra pit stop. He closed up and overtook the two Renaults and Aston Martin. So showing the Ferrari did clearly have pace. Obviously Schumacher showed that, but you know, how unlucky was that for Verstappen? You know, he was ahead of Schumacher in the race before he had the crash. He was around where Science was. So if you think about it, without that crash, I probably would have had to have tried to overtake Verstappen in this race uh, when I made my second pit stop there. So a massively unlucky race for Verstappen, but it's just not going to add uh, any good to his misery of a season so far with zero points in this season. But like I mentioned, for the case in Leclerc with that win, that's going to rocket him up the standings. And so as we look
look on to the driver's standings, Ricardo actually still leads the way in the driver's championship then. Surprised at that, but fair play. So he's done a decent job being quite consistent, obviously, in the last three races. Leclerc, though, way up the order into P2 there. So he's announced himself in the championship fight, I guess, here at round number four. Myself in P3. Then you got Sainz, Russell, Giovinazzi in P6. A very strong position for him in the Red Bull team because, you know, ever since he went back to Red Bull, having left them before, you know, Gasly's been the team leader. So to see him up there leading the team in P6 is very good news for him. Vettel P7. Van Dorn, despite being looking so good throughout the season, he's actually got quite unlucky and quite in inconsistent. So he's only in P8 in the standings. Ed of Verline, Schumacher, Albon, and then Sergio Perez. In the constructor standings, things now look a little different for a few teams. McLaren, for us, we still lead the way ahead of Audi. Monster Mercedes up into third place ahead of Jaguar. Red Bull climb up into P4 now and overtake Ferrari, but I'm sure Red Bull will still not be happy with where they are, because really, on out-and-out -out pace on paper, you would say they deserve to be at least where Mercedes are, so I'm sure they'll still be not too completely happy with how their season's going. Porsche down to P7, so even after a, so after a really quick start for the new German team, of course, eventually, the kind of experience will pay out for the other teams, and they're dropping down the order, but they're not too far off, I guess, Ferrari, if they were to get a few more decent results in this season. Then you've got BMW, Aston Martin, and then Renault to round things out, but a very interesting Monaco Grand Prix for us. A lot of decent overtakes and great action, but in terms of the results, a very interesting result there. Obviously, we entered this Grand Prix with the massive news that Leclerc and Verstappen were effectively swapping cockpits here this season, and now we've got the announcement of Leclerc into the championship, and maybe, maybe Mercedes announcing themselves as a fighter as well. We'll have to see, because of course, you've got to remember the only reason Mercedes were, you know, good here was because they are the team of the highest downforce, but come next race, that may completely just go back to normal. They may be floundering once again, so we'll have to see how that progresses and what teams make upgrades come to the next race, which will be the Belgium Grand Prix. But guys, that was a thoroughly entertaining Monaco Grand Prix to talk you through. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Arifa. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.